Um, I'm Jill with Go English Coach. Now we are starting our Advanced Grammar 1 class. This is um, Advanced Grammar 1. Okay, it is the first class of eight. So hopefully you are here to really jump in and dive in and get going with your English. Um, I'd love to help you with that. So I just finished the intermediate grammar one class. So if you wanted to start a little bit before where we are starting here today, um, go ahead and watch that video. You can access all of our videos from the calendar. You just click on it and then you can watch the past classes as well. So that's a really great feature, I think, for teaching and learning English. Okay, so welcome everybody. Advanced Grammar One, Class One. We will have eight of these in the month of May, okay? Today we are, I always put here my little plan for the day. We're going to review the grammar presentation for the simple present and present progressive tenses. Now, if you are an advanced English learner, you have likely done a lot of this work already. Um, and the great part about it is that we're going to just dive a little bit deeper in this class today and talk a little bit about um, usage um, between the simple and the present progressive tenses. Then we're going to talk about these non-action verbs. So there are some verbs in English that we do not typically use the ing form with, or if we do, the point is that it really doesn't change the meaning. Um, when you compare the ing form to the present tense, okay? So we'll talk about and look at a list of those verbs. We're going to look at the spelling and pronunciation. Um, spelling and pronunciation is a really important thing in um, English. And the, the reason is, is that English is not a phonetic uh, um, English is not a phonetic language, right? And what does that mean? That means that very often or often enough, the letters and the sounds are not always the same. So for example, you may have the letter O in the word hot, for example, or college. And the sound that you hear, hot, is an ah sound, right? But it's spelled H-O-T. So my point here, you know, I've had students say hot, hot, right? And that's not, that's not how we say it in Amer American English. Um, not a big problem, but I think that, you know, if you're learning the language, you really want to know the pronunciation. So the fact that, um, the fact that English is not um, a phonetic language makes it difficult. And I will tell you um, from years in working in, classrooms in the United States and teaching English to English language learners. Um, students in even native speakers spend a lot of time practicing and learning spelling. And it's for this very same reason, right? So, you know, this word, you know, can, or this one, these words cause a lot of problems. Um, for language learners, right? This, this is the past tense to think, right? So this ah, ought, the pronunciation of this can be really tricky. And then, you know, you compare it to something that looks very similar through, and it's got ooh, and this is ah. So spelling and pronunciation are two things that I really encourage English language learners to focus on. Um, I am offering a pronunciation course, um, it's pronunciation and fluency level one, and that is Mondays and Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So go ahead and look at our calendar and kind of, you can always add it to your calendar so you can remember. And then if you're not able to make it that time, like I said, you can go back and look at the calendar to try and, um, make it fit in your schedule and then, or watch it in the past. So you maybe have to work during the day, no problem. You know, just come home and watch the lesson from that day. And each lesson builds on each other. So lesson one or lesson two, 
references the work we did in lesson one. So going in order, you know, is really important too. If you don't have to, if you have a specific thing that, you know, you really want to practice and I talked about it in lesson six, go ahead and just watch lesson six. Okay. So practicing spelling and pronunciation of these tenses um, is important. Okay. Um, and then finally, we're going to do a little bit of practice and hopefully we can get through all of that stuff in this class today. So let's, so I do move fairly quickly in these classes, especially when there's no live students with me. So then, so then you can watch on your own and go ahead and just pause and stop and rewind and kind of, um, go at your own pace with the class. Okay. So here's a, because you are advanced students or hopefully you are advanced students, I'm talking about a C1 or C2 student. And this, I'll show you guys here. Um, and the C1 and C2 are, it's the, uh, what do they call it? The common European framework. And I reference that here and there. It's, you know, it's not a big deal if you don't know where you are at, but you know, you just want to be able to understand what level and what you should know at that level. So that framework, the A1, A2, you know, all of those is really nice to know kind of where you're at. And then you can say, okay, I know I want to be at C2 in two years or something like that. Um, so I always really recommend you can, there's online tests that you can do that are free. Um, and I can put a link in our app or on our site too. Actually, it is linked on our um, our home page. So goenglishcoach.com. Um, last, before we jump in here, is this is the book that I like to use. Um, I don't get paid or anything from <laughs> Pearson, but these, I've, I've worked in a lot of schools and taught adults for many years, so, um, and kids, but I really like how these books lay out the grammar and then provide some really good, good like um, practice to exercise and um, and use the, the 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 grammar that you're learning. Okay, so okay, so I've got here just the general overview of how we form the simple present. Okay, um, and. I've mentioned this in the in the intermediate class before, but I really like to use um, kind of like a formula for this stuff. So, for example, we've got subject. This is a very simple tense. You've got the subject, which is they. Then you've got verb, and then you've got the remainder of the sentence, right? So one thing that is important to remember in um, the English language is that we are what we call an SVO language. So what does SVO? And, and this is, a we're pretty strict about this. And what does that mean? So SVO stands for subject, verb, object. Okay, so that's the order that the majority of our sentences use, the subject, next verb, and then the object. So let's just do a quick discussion about that. Um, let's see here. So uh, she likes cats, okay? Very simple sentence, but I just wanna be able to show my point here. She likes cats, okay? So this is your subject, right? Then we have the verb and what is it that she likes? That's the object, subject, verb, object. She likes cats, okay? So this is the order that um, most of our, our, our sentences go in. Um, other languages, for example, in Spanish, um, you guys will hear me reference um, Spanish. I've studied Spanish for many years. I still can't speak it very well, um, but I try. Um, anyways, I, in Spanish, you can move the object and the verb around a little bit more. Um, however, in English, we do not do that. Okay. Um, so you, for example, you would never say cats she likes, but in Spanish, that's okay. Okay. So, or it's, you know, maybe not as common, but you can do it and it's grammatically correct. In English, it's not. So 
So keep that in mind. We, I will reference this for you many other times going forward in the future. Um, so a subject, verb, object, and we can look, we will look at, you know, more complex um, forms of this. Um, so let's just, we'll leave that there for now. Keep that in your mind though, SVO, okay? Okay, so they live in Texas. So subject, verb, and then the rest of the sentence. There's not necessarily an object here. She always drives to work. So keep in mind when we use the present tense, right? We use present tense when we're talking about something that happens regularly. Um, and I mentioned this in the intermediate grammar class, but um, we use in English, um, we use the simple present really only to discuss things that we do regularly, like my car is black, I drive a black car. So that's the present tense. Um, my dog eats ice cream, right? Um, that's something that happens regularly. Um, I wake up at 7 a.m. I do that every day, okay? Does that make sense? We don't use the present tense in English to talk about something that is happening now, okay? When we're talking about something that is happening now, we're going to use present progressive, okay? So this is a nice indicator that you're talking about present tense. She always drives to work, okay? So these two are positive, the affirmative examples. They live in Texas. She always drives to work. Now, if we change these to negative, we've got they don't live in Texas, right? They don't live in Texas. She doesn't always drive to work. She doesn't. So remember the third person uses does. Keep in mind and listen for that pronunciation of that. Doesn't, it's not doesn't, okay, doesn't. Okay. And then when we use the simple present in a question, okay, do they live in Texas? Does she always drive to work? We're going to use the do. So we change the formula, right? Here's the original formula. And then what happens with the formula here? So, um, so if we write this out, they don't or do not, right? So for the negative, we use the subject, the do, auxiliary plus the verb. Oops, I can't spell here. Okay. Um, and so that's your formula here for the negative. And then when we switch it and we make the question, um, we're going to use, we're going to switch this. We're going to put the do or does first plus then the subject, okay, plus your verb, your main verb. So we call this an auxiliary verb. It is a verb, but it's called an auxiliary verb. Just kind of keep that in your mind. You know, when you're adults and you learn a language, you really, I know it's really important for adults to learn um, the sections and what things are called. Um, of course, when we learn our native language, you know, we learn by listening and then responding in this, this, a different process. So, you know, learning English as an adult, it's a little bit more formulaic, um, you know, using formulas and this is how it's done and rules. Um, so, so just keep that in mind, you know, we, you learn your first language differently than you learn your second or third or whatever language English is to you, you know, and then you're kind of always taking that language and filtering it through your native language. And so that's where people have um, uh, friction, I guess you could say, or um, interference is what we say from the teaching part of things. So, um, okay, so here's your formula. It's an auxiliary verb, the do does, the subject plus the verb, okay? And then your answer, yes, they do, or no, she doesn't. 
And finally, how to form WH questions. So think of questions that start with WH, who, what, where, when, why, okay? Where do they live? Why does she drive, okay? So those are some different kinds of questions. These are yes, no questions that where the answer is either yes or no. And then you have WH questions. Okay, so that's just a very fast overview of um, simple present. Okay, so when we are discussing now, let's see, um, I was going to do non-action. Yeah, let's do this. One thing to talk about that I think people often make um, mistakes with when um, writing or speaking it, using the present tense is the pronunciation of the endings for the present tense. So we've got a couple of different rules, okay? So for the present tense, for example, how do we form the third person, right? So again, I think I've showed you guys this. This is the, the grammar book um, that I'm using. And so very easy, right? The only way that we really ever change, um, I live, you live. This is again, just simple present tense. Let's do this. In the third, we've got he, she, it. We're gonna say, lives okay we live and then they live so as you can see very easy they none of them change except this third person and then we add the s okay now what i wanted to show you guys is the pronunciation of this s sometimes is an s sound and sometimes it is a z sound so in this example lives what are you hearing? Lives. It's a Z sound, okay? So this one has a Z. When we talk about once, what do you guys hear there? Once. It's an S sound, okay? So when I use these little lines, if you guys have not been to one of my pronunciation and fluency classes before, we use these lines to talk about the pronunciation. Okay, so that is how something is spelled. Excuse me, it's how something is pronounced. So we spell it like this and we pronounce it with a Z sound, okay? So that's what the lines indicate is the sound, okay? The pronunciation of it. So here, the pronunciation of that final S sound is an S once, once. Now, you're probably asking, well, how do I know, teacher, if um, I have to pronounce the final S sound with a Z or an S. Great question. So it will probably come to you naturally because it's a natural evolution of how the sounds come together. But the, the way, if you're having a problem um, deciding if it's lives or lifts, it, it, that would make a difference in somebody understanding you. If you're going to say lives, it's a totally different word, lives. Okay, so here's how you know. The difference is you're gonna look at this sound, okay? And this sound here. So if we look at, let's let's write this word once in, in using the international phonetic alphabet. Wa, actually, very easy. It doesn't change very much. For lives, it's going to be i, lives. Okay, that's how you write those words um, using the international phonetic alphabet. So you can see, so what we're looking at is the sound has to match. So the T sound, if you put your hand here on your throat, okay, and we're going to use, we're going to say the sound t. You don't have any feeling here. There's no vibration. T -t. It's just air coming out. It's not vibration. So that is, then we have to, and, and the same is with the S sound. So t -t -t -t. 
And then we have s. There's no vibration here. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to, that's what we call voiced list. Voice, not voiced list, voice list. Okay. Voiceless. So T, T is voiceless and S is vo voiceless. So they are both voiceless. Okay. In comparison, a V, if you say the sound V, 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 you can feel vibration here. Live. V. You really have to kind of accentuate or exaggerate the sound to feel the vibration. Lives live kind of tickles your lips so v is voiced so when you have the vibration here it means it's voiced so there's vibration and um kind of like a buzzing in your throat so and also the same with the z sound z z okay so what we're doing is we're gonna if something is voiceless so if the sound before the S, this is the rule, okay? If the sound before the final S is voiceless, you're gonna use S. If the sound before the S, well, she, no, we don't use that. We're gonna say she. <laughs> if the sound before the S here is voiced, you're gonna use a Z sound, okay? Um, so, and this happens also with the ED sounds, and we'll talk about that when we get to past tense. But um, so, so keep that in mind, okay? The spelling and the pronunciation of these. So the spelling is the same, lives, just has an S at the end. Wants, we just write S. But the pronunciation of that final S sound is just a little bit different. S and Z. Okay, and we're going to match it based on the sound there. So let's do a couple of these together. Okay, let's do, let's see. Um, needs. Uh, draws. Ooh, here's a good one. So, so we have these are the ending sounds and we've actually got one more. So we just talked about these two and they're, but they're total. There are three. Um, let's see. I'm going to give a couple more here and we're going to choose from these three for here. One, two, three. Let's see. Um, right. And why can't I think of it? <laughs> so let's see. Stands. How about that? Okay. All right, you guys. Let's take a look. Um, so we've got z, s, and is. So we haven't talked about this one yet, and you'll see. I bet you guys can guess which one it is and which one it goes to. Um, so the final sound on this. So we're going to write what the final sound is. So the word is needs, needs, z. What's that final sound you guys hear there? Needs. Exactly. It's a Z. Awesome. Okay. Because this is voiced. It's a voiced sound. D, d, d. D is a, is a voiced sound. And so then this is the voiced version. Okay. All right. Great work. Okay. Draws, draws. You can feel the Z there, but you think to yourself, but teacher, this is a, it's a vowel sound, right? It's the same if we have try, you know, and then it goes to tries, right? Tries. That is also a Z sound because Vowels are voiced. Ah, uh, e, o. All vowels are voiced. Okay, impossible to not have one that is vo is voiceless. Got it. Okay, fixes. So this one is different. We haven't talked about this ending yet. Fixes, and 
So it's this I Z sound. So we, you can't just have the sound fix. You have to have a sound between the X and the S, just a small little sound. So fixes. So this is the third um, pronunciation that we have for a final S. And then you'll also notice the spelling. So we're talking about spelling and pronunciation. When you have X at the end, you're gonna have an ES instead of just S. So we never write this as a word. This is not a word in English, okay? It's fixes. And you're probably wondering if you haven't studied this for a while, there are a couple of different ones like this. Let's see, um, things that end with, let's see, S, H, C, H, X, um, Z, and let's see, what are my other ones here? S, H, oh, and S, yeah. So when we have that third person, we need the E, S at the end when the word ends with S, H, C, H, X, Z or S. Okay, so um, if you have the word watch, that goes to watches. Okay, he watches TV every day. Okay, and the pronunciation is this I Z. Okay, he um, fixes the B buzzes. Um, let's see. And it, remember, it's the sound. Okay. So, okay. Uh, let's continue here. So we're choosing from these three pronunciations for the final S sound. So writes, writes, no, no vibration there. So we're going to put S writes. All right. And then stands. Can you guys even read that? Stands. So, um, stands, z, z. we have that same sound with a Z, okay? Okay, hopefully this is a nice just review for you guys and you've already studied all of this. <laughs> okay, um, let's see, what else? Let's do a quick discussion of non-action verbs. So, um, Oh, one more thing I wanted to say to you. So we've got the final S sounds. We discussed watch and watches. So when you've got S, H, C, H, X, Z, or S, you're going to add E, S, okay? And then one other thing before we start is this, like for this example, right? When we've got, let's take this away here. When you have a word that, hopefully everybody remembers this, um, here's cry or try. The third person, right, he, she, or it, it changes from a Y to I-E-S, okay? So cry goes to cries, try goes to tries, I-E-S. Okay, the another, another example, how about study? And we're gonna say, she studies. Now keep in mind that's an S, tries, Z, cries. And that's because these are vowel sounds. So the sound before the final S is a vowel and a vowel is always voiced, okay? So you can always check if a sound is voiced or voiceless by pronouncing it and feeling here. Um, otherwise, you can get lists of sounds that are voice versus voiceless in English and try to practice those. Um, I would imagine that most of this comes very just naturally because it's really difficult to have a voiceless sound next to a voiced sound, which is why the matching is even a thing, <laughs> okay. Um, okay, great. So um, I would like to take another couple of minutes to discuss the non-action verbs. So again, a non-action verb is 
I'm going to switch you guys over here to my desk here. Um, and then we can look at this list together. Okay, so non action verbs are. Here's a nice list here. So a non action verb again is a verb that does not get used in the um, they're not used in the progressive tense. So you don't, for example, say, um, I am agreeing with you, you know, you can say that, um, but it just doesn't change the meaning of just saying, I agree with you, or I am agreeing with you. It's not a difference in meaning there. So the categories of things that we um, that are non-action verbs are typically emotions like love, care, trust. Those are things that we typically just use in the present tense, okay? So let's get that here. So these are ones that are used only in present tense. Again, you will hear people say, I I am adoring it. It's a little more colloquial or kind of informal. Um, I, you'll hear a lot of people, for example, say, I am wondering about something. But so the point is, I am wondering does not have a different meaning than I wonder. Okay. So. Uh, so emotions, mental states, wants and preferences. So we don't really say I am preferring, I am wanting. People do say this, I am wishing. Uh, it's just that the difference, the meaning doesn't change, okay? Senses and perceptions. So things like feel, hear, notice, observe, perceive, see, smell, sound, taste. Appearance and value. It appears that there is no difference between morning and night. I don't know. <laughs> um, or a possession and a relationship. So instead of really like focusing on these categories, you guys, I would really just kind of focus on the types of words and noticing how those are used and not used. So I own a home. Um these shoes belong to me. Um, I represent my clients, right? So, um, so, so take a look at that and let's see if we can practice this a little bit. Um, actually what I'd like to do, so we're going to end the class here in a couple of minutes, but what I would like for you to do is, um, Take a look at this here, okay? So I'm gonna see if I can get this a little bit higher up. There we go. Okay, so if we're practicing the simple and the present progressive, and we'll, we'll go over a little bit more of the present progressive in our class on Thursday, but Take some time and read this set paragraph. So if you need to pause it, pause it. And then you can fill in the correct versions of the verb. So here it says, complete the conversations and use the correct form of the verbs in parentheses, the simple present um, and the present progressive. So the, the top exercise here says, let's just do this one, actually. You guys do this one. And then in class on Thursday, we will do this part together. Okay, so take a minute, you guys. I'm going to make a little better. So it says to circle the simple present verbs and underline the present progressive. So circling, are you living? And underlining, so we're underlining the present progressive and we're um, circling the present, okay? Are you living is present progressive. So there's a line here or working. Okay. Do you worry? That's present. So we're going there about making a mistake with someone's name or title. 
You are right to be concerned. This is, that's just simple present. Naming systems vary a lot from culture to culture and people tend to have very strong feelings about their names. So this here is not a verb, naming systems. This is the subject, okay? Well, now help is available. That's present tense in the form of an interest. They're really trying to trick you here. They're using ing words, but this is an adjective. And practical book by Terry Morrison. Kiss, bow, or shake hands. How do business in six? How to do business in sixty countries gives. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I want you guys to do the rest. Okay. Well, let's wrap for today, you guys. Um, great job on getting started with this grammar class. Um, the next class, so this class will be Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. And again, I record all of my lessons so you're able to watch them after or later in the day or the next day or whenever you have time. So very happy for you guys to be here. Um, and if you can join the live classes, it's great. Then we have a more interactive and very fun discussion. And I can really help you guys to address your concerns. So have a great day and I'll see you all very soon.